Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to take a look at the Swordsman. This guide is featuring two prominent builds of the Swordsman. One is a variation of the tanky build that I had in my guide, which is really more a dualist retaliation attack of opportunity build, which we're going to go through now. And the second one will be an aggression uh, build. Funnily, both of them do have two-handed weapons. So the swordsman um, or fighter is really an interesting character. Let's dive into them and see what we have in store. Starting again with the stealth di distribution, then walking through the actual equipment and then the skills. Let's start with the stats, very similar to most of the characters you want to start with movement. Keep in mind, uh, heavy armor wielders need a little bit more movement, so I upped it at 22 base movement. Then you want to upgrade the willpower as far as possible. In this case, the character has a temporary buff, but he would st uh, stick at uh, a solid 16 plus 1, 17 um, base willpower. So the moment that you reach the 15 threshold, you're fine. Everything else in this case could go into strength with this particular build because you want to deal a lot of damage. Granted, I could have more strength in that particular build, but that's fine. As for the equipment, I decided to yet again use equipment that uh, we are going to uh, be able to craft during the leveling process. It's not overbearing equipment. You can create much better equipment, but I want the build to carry uh, the guide and not the actual equipment. So all of this is self-crafted gear. We do have an Arcadian uh, two-hander. We do have an Arcadian steel uh, breastplate and we do have a uh, Arcadian steel salad as well as a crafted trinket. So it's completely in your uh, capabilities to get the exact same layout. Let's talk through how this build works and how the equipment complements it. All right, let's talk about the equipment. We do have um, a build that focuses on attacks of opportunity. So the idea is we want to engage and we want to disengage. Um, and when whilst we're disengaging, there's a 50% chance that we're taking attacks of opportunity and it is going to become uh, greatly punishing for the enemy over time. It requires sometimes a little bit of luck, but uh, it uh, will be very much worth it. The reason why we can run a two-hander on this build, on this dualist build, is because we've skilled defensively with our armor and with our helmet. So the helmet itself uh, does have the shielding ability on. Keep in mind, this is basically still a tank build. So the main idea is we want to tank enemies, hence almost 80% of guard. We're using shielding four as the imprint, which allows 4% extra guard for each reinforcement layer. So that's 12% guard with uh, what the armor is giving. And the armor itself has three armor slots for um, guard and armor in it, the colossal reinforced layer of the ox. So we're having 18 plus 12 guard just by having the setup uh, in the helmet and the armor. So that 30% guard allows us then to drop the shield and instead run a two-hander instead of a one-handed uh, weapon. I tested the build with a one-handed weapon and a, um, and a grappling hook. That also is a way of running it, but the two-handed weapon really deals more damage and you will see in a second why that is important. As for the oils on the two-handed weapon, we're having putrid oil. Uh, putrid oil applies feather, typically 20% uh, chance to, uh, to do that. 
and um, Feverus is stacking 10% above uh, that will deal more and more damage. We're using the belt accessory uh, to have a concentration of putrid oil with more chance to apply the effect, um, which puts another 30% uh, chance on top of it. Um, which means as time goes by, we're applying feather stack on top of the enemy. The enemy therefore will take more damage and every further retaliation attack will deal more and more damage. The second oil that we put onto the weapon is a perforating oil, which allows us to ignore 50% of the guard of the enemy. Since we are not attacking from behind, uh, this build here will need to tank and also deal with quite heavily tanky enemies on the opposing side so ignoring guard will substantially increase our damage. Let's look at the actual skills. So we're running fighter again. Destabilizing um, uh, strike will be helpful. You not, might uh, wonder why would you put uh, the perforating oil and the destabilization strike on top of each other? Great question. So there are two answers to that. Number one, um, I don't think that we will only have one opponent that we're working through. So the first one uh, can be destabilized and therefore guard is reduced to zero. Number two, if you do have multiple opponents in the front line, you can with that setup destabilize one of them, and then disengage and then engage with another one and continue your uh, barrage on that other character. So if you don't want that setup, I would uh, recommend using another oil. Um, there are plenty, you can use sharpening oil for more critical uh, hit chance, but uh, this is the only kind of duplication on uh, something with this, uh, with this build. We're going to go into Valorous Duel as a tank build. In that build in particular, you still want to create a lot of Valor. Every time we engage, we create one Valor. Uh, that is at least Valor neutral, if not Valor positive with our standard attack. So that will be a great option to just get the Valor up. Then uh, next up in this particular build, we want to go with counter attack. The first time the unit engages during their turn, they gain repost. So we engage, we immediately will be um, able to disengage, get a extra strike in with repost. Um, the, the first time that we're essentially being hit. And the first time they disengage, we get in, uh, inspiration, which allows us to double our movement. So we're actually quite mobile for a tank. So these two very staple uh, bases for that retaliatory build. Then we're going into Master, master Opportunitist, uh, where we're increasing our damage by 50% for our attacks of opportunity, and we're reducing the incoming damage by 50% from their attacks of opportunity. Uh, that's a variation uh, from the hardcore training that I'm typically running, mainly because we're going to be hit often. 50-50 means uh, that also we are going to be hit, but this here is a flat out 50% uh, reduction. Uh, whenever we're getting hit and it is an increase of our damage that we're dealing. We're then going into defensive repost where disengaging means 50-50 in attacks of opportunity instead of 100% receiving them. And as a class specialization, I opted for bulwark where whenever we're engaging in combat, we get deflection. And whenever we're disengaging, we're getting fury. So 50% improved damage. So let that sink in of how the build works. So we're engaging, right? Um, as we're engaging, we already have almost 80% damage reduction just flat out from our uh, uh, gear, which means instead of 100 uh, points of damage, we're down to 25 points in that particular case. Since we are engaging, we're getting deflection, so that's another 70% reduction of that. So all of a sudden, we're already down to five points of damage. Um, if we're disengaging, uh, there is another 50% reduction for incoming damage. So instead of five points, that's only two and a half points of damage that uh, we're taking. In return, we're getting a lot of Valor. In return, we're getting at least one free repost attack. 
and in return we're getting fury so that's 50 percent increased damage another 50 percent increase from attacks of opportunity and we do have a stacking uh, feather uh, buff on top of that on uh, onto the enemy so this build really is going to dish out quite a bit of damage over time uh, for a tanky build and we're going to see how it plays out all right, let's take a look at our swordsman's uh, build. We're going to tank a little bit. We're fighting against level 14 enemies. These are quite overwhelming foes. And our idea now is to make sure that we can attack and kill most of them in uh, no time. So we're moving in. Uh, we don't need to destabilizing strike. Matter of fact, we're moving to here and we're going to use that nice little aoe attack uh, take a look uh, we already dealt 150 points of damage applied a feather and are now going to engage so um, against uh, the uh, strong tank we are engaging we're getting repost then we're disengaging striking for another 170 re-engaging for um, uh, for uh, 300 and we could uh, now disengage or finish him uh, finish him off finish him there you go um, the disengage dealt 370 points of damage so we killed one we are very close uh, to this one the moment that we're going to engage with him we're going to get more valor um, as you have seen we were uh, despite spending quite a bit of valor we were valor uh, positive the entire time and we dealt a tremendous amount of damage for a tank let's uh, see that again Next up, we look at the second swordsman build, the Miser, which is yet another damage build. We downgraded to medium armor and we're going to the direct swords master build. So this is not a tank uh, build. It's more a bruiser build. We're still rocking around uh, 30 to 35 uh, guard. You can increase that uh, if you want uh, with uh, using uh, double uh, guard with in position oil. Uh, if you really want another uh, tank, but I I'm showing you the pure damage version of the build So as always we're going for willpower first uh, 15 or up then we're going for movement in this case 22 the rest goes into crit um, We do have standard equipment medium crafted equipment and the medium two-hander and really a uh, lot of it is like we had it in the first build uh, we take uh, this guy this time brutality uh, for our uh, enchantment or stamp on the helmet we're using three times crit armor uh, inlets in order to get to that 100% crit uh, we are at 87 plus 15 from food is kept and we're using putrid oil to continue applying feather as well as perforating oil to ignore 50% of the guard uh, with a putrid oil um, concentrate so that there is always feather applied because we're going to attack a lot of cases now if you don't uh, want that putrid oil and instead want to go uh, for a um, tankier build then I would uh, su suggest uh, that you look into hardening oil and the hardening oil concentrate which gives you a 100% chance to be in position therefore doubling the guard to reach almost 70 as guard that's a very, very tanky and decent uh, guard version uh, for you. And the build will deliver on the amount of tankiness that you would be looking for. Only thing that you're uh, giving up is essentially a little bit of uh, feather um, in return for quite a lot of uh, tankiness. So how do the skills look like? The sword master should deal a lot of damage and really a laceration is the name of the game it deals uh, a lot of damage to all enemy units uh, two times so it's basically a dual slash and uh, usable after one attack so you need to attack first and then you basically do laceration i personally like it because uh, if you're standing in front of a group and you do have a two-handed sword that allows you to attack twice afterwards applying the full damage of your uh, strikes 
You want to gain Valorous Chain. Every time you take uh, several enemies, you gain one uh, Valor, just to ease the Valor load a little bit on the build. And then really what we're doing is a lot of uh, what we did uh, beforehand, uh, making sure that we are, whenever we are engaging, that we are as uncomfortable to deal with as possible. We're using Bulwark first, um, simply because the deflection and reduction of 70% damage is absolutely great. If you use in position on that build, then together with the guard and the deflection, you will be fine. You will be just a full tank. On top of it, we're using Master Opportunist because whenever we are going to disengage, there will be attacks of opportunity and we're going to uh, engage uh, quite uh, quite regularly if we're standing in, in the front line. You can alternatively go for hardcore training. There is nothing wrong with that. I personally have uh, done that in the uh, past. So you're immunizing yourself with bleeding, poison and burning. Whenever you would be affected by that, you're uh, going to get two rage instead. Matter of fact, if you want to up your uh, your damage just a little bit more, you could go with a burning um, oil on, uh, on top of your weapon. Always apply burning and then the burning will spill over and you will get rage for the next uh, time that uh, that uh, it's your turn so over time that will build up i built this particular case around uh, being tanky enough to withstand even uh, with kind of mo moderate uh, medium armor and uh, really bulwark and master opportunists are fantastic options for that we're going into defensive repost and then class specializing into counter attack the first time that the unit engages during the turn they gain repost and really how that build will play out is we're going to attack a group of enemies then we're going to lacerate them and kill them and we're going to move on to the next uh, person we're going to taunt them into attacking us that will weaken them you'll get bulwark on top of it and you'll get uh, counter attack so uh, repost then you're disengaging if they hit you hit back um, if you are um, taking the 50 percent chance of hitting them then you just attack them and still are standing there with a repost ready to hit them again next turn so it's a classical bruiser build in uh, in its in its uh, core form and with laceration in itself the core of the build is super strong if you're ever however running out of valor then the the core mechanics that i propose down here which is hitting multiple enemies uh, grants you uh, valor uh, you could um, also skill on top of that valorous duel instead of uh, the repost if you want uh, to sacrifice that extra attack of opportunity and rather become a valorous spender then that is an option here as well but um, having the option to attack multiple uh, enemies and getting one valor into being very tanky uh, triggering attacks of opportunity and then uh, following up with repost that in itself is a great mechanic and we're going to see how it plays out all right swordsman build in action so let's see how well this build is actually going to perform in terms of damage dealing so only base equipment we're going to load up uh, with a nice a little um, wrath so we do have Fury, which means the next attacks are going to deal a little bit more damage. Uh, I will say that in advance to not inflate the numbers. And we're going to see straight off from the bat 450 points of damage and then followed up by 370 and there would be a second one with 370. So let me just point out uh, Laceration is dealing a lot of damage. Uh, the build itself is also allowing you to uh, still tank uh, quite well um, as you can simply get uh, the enemy uh, adjacent to you and then uh, use the attacks of opportunity. But you cannot engage as often as you would with a standard retaliation build. So uh, all around kind of a balanced build uh, with a lot of upside potential. In, in the right uh, positions, you can deal a lot of damage with laceration. It's uh, certainly worth its money 
when you do have a situation where you can hit two or three people and it is almost uh, valor point neutral uh, if you cleave and then uh, less uh, lacerate uh, then both of that together is uh, two uh, valor points and that's exactly how much you spent on laceration to begin with so good build overall all right we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, into the specific class i hope you enjoyed it if you like guides i do have plenty of them for war tales if you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it i would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below that always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel and it's a little bit of given uh, given back Thanks for watching, see you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.